Now let's cover stress. Stress can be good or a bad thing. It's good when it helps us, when it helps us adapt to changes in our body and environment. For example, like running from a bear in the woods in that fight or flight mode. But stress is often bad when chronic or persistent, when there's no periods of rest between stressful occurrences. This raises our blood pressure, cortisol levels, and puts loads of strain on the body. Typically caused by psychological issues, family drama, money issues, and even normal life, like events in nursing school. So let's review the basics of what happens in the body with the PNS versus the SNS in this next little video segment. Now for physiology, we have the CNS versus the PNS. So the CNS is our central nervous system made up of the brain and spinal cord. Now the most important part to know for med surge and pharmacology exams is the brain stem. This guy helps to control the heart rate and respiratory rate. So when we give drugs like CNS depressants, like opioids and benzos, they depress the CNS, making the heart rate low and slow. Now on the other side, we have the PNS, the peripheral nervous system, which is made up of a bunch of nerves that sort of branch off from the spinal cord and extend to all parts of the body. Now the PNS controls the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system, which we'll be covering in a moment. So to help you organize this all in your brain, write down this nifty chart. As you can see, the nervous system is this big umbrella term for the CNS, our central nervous system, and the PNS, our peripheral nervous system. And as stated before, from this PNS branches off the autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system. Now, out of all these, the one to focus on is the autonomic nervous system, since it's the most tested. This guy controls the SNS, our sympathetic nervous system, which controls our fight and flight response. So just think the SNS is our stress nervous system that speeds up the vital signs, specifically the heart rate and blood pressure in order to fight and flight with stress. And on the other side, the PNS, the parasympathetic nervous system, controls our rest and digest. Think PNS as our poop nervous system that sort of puts the brakes on the vital signs, slowing down both the heart rate and blood pressure. So just think rest and ah, digest. Now, don't get confused with both PNSs here. We have the peripheral nervous system, which is the overarching umbrella, and also the PNS with the parasympathetic nervous system. So let's start with wrapping up the somatic nervous system, and then we'll break down the autonomic. Hey there, nursing student, listen up. Did you know only 20% of our videos are here on YouTube? You're missing out on over 900 videos not on YouTube, plus 500 visual study guides that follow along every video, and a massive quiz bank to test your knowledge. All neatly organized in our new app. Try it for free. Visit simplenursing.com today. Think S for sensations for somatic nervous system, like feeling something hot or even voluntary motor movements, like picking your nose. So when we perform neuro checks, we assess the motor function with grips, pushes, and pulls, and also for sensation with somatic nervous system. And for the autonomic nervous system, this one is the one to know for pharmacology exams. So guys, focus on this. This autonomic nervous system is kind of like auto for a car. We have a gas pedal that tells vital signs to go and brakes that tell the vital signs to slow. So the SNS, our sympathetic nervous system, is the gas that speeds up the vital signs with our SNS, telling that body to go with the fight and flight. And the PNS, our parasympathetic nervous system, pumps the brakes, telling the body to slow and basically to relax and rest and digest with the PNS. Now, normally they work together to balance each other out. Here's the big key focus. Exams love to test on this, so write this down. The SNS I call our stress nervous system, used in survival mode, like running from a bear or fighting an alligator. The body is filled with adrenaline, that catecholamine. Now, another name for adrenaline is epinephrine. So think catecholamines, we get cat-like responses. We get constriction in the blood vessels that push the vital signs up and help the body to react in survival mode. 
Now, the two catecholamines to know is epinephrine and norepi. These guys help constrict the blood vessels to bump those vital signs up. And in result, we speed up the vital signs, increasing the heart rate, BP, and respiratory function. So naturally, we get a high and dry body, high blood pressure, high heart rate, and big lungs from bronchodilation to breathe more effectively, and dilated pupils to see better like when running from that bear, and a really dry body since the PNS is turned off. You really don't need to be resting or digesting when you're running for your life. Now in terms of signs and symptoms of stress, we see aches and pains, chest pain or tightness, GI upset, changes in appetite, exhaustion, trouble sleeping, and decreased immunity. Kind of sounds like everything you experienced during nursing school, right? So for coping skills, it's recommended to exercise regularly, meditation and breathing exercises as well. As nurses can identify available community resources and also refer the client to counseling if needed. All right, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take your quiz and download the study guides. And also feel free to share the love, share with a classmate and even your instructor. See you guys in the next videos.